Hi everyone, in this video today we are going to make this cute little stump work, raised work dragonfly. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and as I said we are looking at stump work or raised work embroidery today but just before we start that I've got a couple of thank yous. So people who've clicked the super thanks button below the video to show their appreciation that they're enjoying the videos. I just want to say thank you to you. So we've got quite a few. So we've got Linda, we've got Miss Melaby again. Hi there. Um, Ruth Ann. Emma, Joyce and Margaret. So thank you very much all for your contributions. I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. So if you didn't see the first part of this video, we had a little look at backgrounds and stitching on some backgrounds and I did a couple of different ones. This is a simple one and then we've got the more complex one that I'm going to work on. So if you're interested in doing a background for your project and you want to know all about this, do check, up, check out the previous video. You can see that up here. Um, and to see how I made these backgrounds. Um, if you're not worried about those, you can just stitch this on a piece of plain fabric, that's fine. But I just wanted to show you um, how I did these backgrounds for my project. So if you want to work this project with me, you will also need the download. This is free on the free stuff page on the website. We'll put a link in the description below this video for this. You can print this off and it's got all the pattern pieces and the outline design for the bulrushes if you want to have a go at that and lots of um, other information, including the materials that you'll need and the order that you need to work. So do go and print that off from there if you want to have a go to. So let's have a look at what we're going to be stitching today. So here's a little sample of the dragonfly we're going to make. So I showed these in the last video as well, but this is a close up of what we are doing. So we're going to make the little body, attach the wings on there. And as you can see, this one's just on a plain background, but I'm actually going to work mine on this. So this is my bulrushes design from the previous video. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So if you've watched any of my videos previously, you will heard, have heard me mention sampling and having a go at something before you do it on the main one, on your actual one. So I have done just that. So I've done that with this piece here. This is the simpler background that I've used with some lace and a little bit of gold fabric behind. And then I've worked the body on top. Just put that down here so you can see that. So I've just had a little practice, make sure I know what I'm doing, um, especially for the camera so I can explain it to you. And I haven't done one for a while as well. So I've tried that on here as well. And I think that looks quite nice. I think I might finish him off. And um, so I've done my practice and now we can go on to the main one to do the finished piece. So we're going to work the body first and then the wings and then we'll attach the wings onto the body to finish him off. So we need to mark the position of him on our fabric first. So what you'll need is the first page of the download. And on this is the centre line for the position of the dragonfly. Now, if you don't need this and you want to go straight on, that's fine. I just hope this is useful to this is useful to help place him in the right place on the fabric. And I'm going to use this tissue paper method. Now there's lots of ways to transfer a design. We've got a video on that, five ways to transfer a design. I'll put that up in the corner for you so you can have a look at that. And um, you can just trace it onto your fabric if you want to, but I'm more framed up, ready to go. So I'm going to use this method because it's very easy and quick. So it's just a little piece of tissue paper here. And I'm just going to trace that line onto the tissue paper doesn't have to be very accurate because we're just going to take this off afterwards. And the good thing about this method is you can actually move this around. You can see through, I can see my design underneath and I can decide where I want to put this. And if you've got a background, it's a good idea to try and make the dragonfly sit in the background. Don't have a background plant there and put your dragonfly over here. You need to connect them somehow. So I want them to overlap a little bit. His wings are going to come out over these leaves. So I think I can go a little bit farther over there, maybe up just a touch like that. And I'm just going to pin that in place. And all you need is a sewing cotton and we're just going to sew on the bottom, sew along that line. So you just need a running stitch. Try and put more of the stitch on the top. So a longer stitch on top and a smaller gap. That means we can see the line on top. I'm just going to stitch over this thread with the body of the dragonfly. So it doesn't matter what color you do it in. You're not going to see this line at all. So when you get to the end, just do a 
double stitch over it to secure the thread because we're going to pull this tissue off now and it can pull the thread out if the thread's not secure. So I've just done two stitches over there. We'll come back up through the middle. Just going to cut that off. Take my pins out. Then we're going to rip. <laughs> so I suggest you're ripping sideways, don't rip upwards, just right up to your stitches there and you can just pull like so. And now I've got my stitches in place. I can get rid of that a little bit now. So a really quick way of doing it. It just helps you to place the dragonfly where you want it. Now I need to pick some threads to do the body in. So I do the body in a stranded cotton or a stranded floss um, because we're going to cut the threads away and that just allows to get some nice fine threads at the end and then something to stitch over it with. So these are the colours that I'm going to do. So I've got this quite dark one here, kind of a teal colour. I'm going to go over the top of it with this nice gold thread. There's a little bit of gold in my painting at the back here and um, I'm going to do his wings in some gold as well. So they will tie everything in nicely together. Now there's no hard and fast rule about how much thread you need for this. So I'm going to show you how I work it out. So we need to get from one end to the other there. So what I'm going to do is actually wrap it around my fingers. I'm going to use three fingers. And then wrap a little bit like so and then what you can do is actually place it on your fabric and see how thick the body is going to look now the thickest part is at the top end at the head end at the thorax end and then we're going to cut it away so you need a lot more here than you need at the bottom don't worry about the bottom it's how big do you want the top bit to be so i think we're going to go a couple more times like so cut that off So I've got myself a loop of thread. I know we'll re reach one end to the other. And then what I'm going to do, actually I'll stitch it down first. So let's secure it in place at the top. So the thread that I'm using for this is a DMC Diamant, Diamant thread, um, just to have a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of contrast with it. You can use anything you like. You can use another stranded cotton if you want to. I suggest a couple of strands if you're using the stranded thread um, for a little bit of extra security, but you really can use any stitch you, any stitch, any thread that you want to use for this. So if you've got something nice and pretty, and then because we're going to stitch all over this, I can start my thread here. So I'm doing my little knot on the top do two small stitches just along that line this will get covered that two stitches just secures the thread and then I'm going to come up just near the end of that line I'm going to cut my knot off I'm ready to stitch it in place so all I'm going to do is just loop my thread inside of that loop of stranded cotton and pull it down. Now I've tried to get these two little ends here at the bottom if you can because that means we're going to have a problem with them at the top later and all I'm going to do is stitch over that. So come up inside the loop, stitch over it quite closely because you want to pull these threads in like so and then just put another stitch in just to secure it in place over the top of that first one. Nice and tight. So that's not going anywhere. Now I found the next thing to do was to actually cut through these. So we're going to pull them straight and just cut through all the ends. I've got kind of like a little tassel going on. So that's, this is the thorax, this is the top of him and we're going to pull it in and we're going to stitch all the way down and we're just going to curve him slightly just because he looks more interesting, looks like he's flying. So a little bit away. So I'm just coming to the side of that line and I'll explain why in a minute. So I've moved those out of the way, coming up to the side, move them the other way, come down the other side with a little bit of a gap there. And then I pull that down slowly, 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 pull all those threads nice and tight. So first stitch in and you can see how that makes a really nice shape at the top. So don't pull these threads, you can see them just let them lie flat there. So I'm just going to move them out of the way again, a little distance away from there. Just come up to the right 
move those out the way down to the left and stitch over him again. And what I'm doing by just coming up and down each side of the line is if this is my threads looking from the end, I'm coming up like that, going over the top and in. If you come up to the side, go and go over the top and straight down, it just flattens the body out and he doesn't look dimensional. But this way he's we're going around the shape of the body and um, he looks nice and three dimensional. So that's why I'm doing that. And then I'm just following this line, which just curves really gently down. You can just see I'm angling that needle in a little bit there, just so that goes around those threads. You can see how great he's looking. Looks like he's on top of the fabric rather than in with the fabric. Does that make sense? Right, so what I'm going to do here, I want to change the thickness of this. I want to make his tail come nice and fine now. So I'm going to just do a little holding stitch in there, straight up. Pull that tight and straight down and that will just stop that coming undone while I cut the threads away. I'm going to bring the needle up where the next stitch will be. Try and leave your threads on the top if you can so you're not fighting with them underneath. And this is a bit where we need some scissors. So some sharp scissors, sharp embroidery scissors. I'm going to hold those back. And I'm just going to pull a few threads out from underneath. Now if you've done gold work, and you've done some string padding. This is exactly the same technique as that. And I'm going to take a few from the bottom. We don't want those ends of thread sticking out on the top. So try and do it underneath as close as you can. Cut them off. Now that is actually coming undone. So that little holding stitch isn't enough. So I'm going to put another holding stitch in. I don't want that to come undone because I'm going to be fighting it. So try and be in control. That's better. Now you decide how many you take out. By the time we get to the end, we want to have two strands left. So that's six strands, but two pieces of thread of six strands each left. That's going to make the bottom of it there. So I think I'm going to cut another one away. If you look at an actual dragonfly, they do the bodies are they're quite thick at the top, the thorax, and then it goes thin very quickly. So you don't want a really gradual decrease. You can cut quite a lot out here. I think I'm going to do another one. Try and cut really close to that bunch there. And then let's go over the top of that one. So you can see that's thinning out already. I'm going to carry on down and do that again. Push those out of the way, pull them from underneath, really close and snip them off. Let's go one more. If you find you haven't done enough, you can always loosen this couching stitch off, this gold one I'm putting over the top, and just pull a few more out as well. So it's better to not cut enough and then think I want to go back and cut more off than cut too many and go, oh, I haven't got enough threads. Now there's a little bit sticking out here. Don't worry about that. We'll deal with that in a second. So let's stitch that one more. And let's cut away again. Not too quite thin at the bottom.
Okay, so we're nearly at the bottom now. There's the end of the line I marked. It doesn't matter if you go over the end, you can make them a nice long body. They do have long bodies, tails, tails. <laughs> Somebody will tell me <laughs> what that's meant to be. Right, now we're off the end of that marked line then. It's just got that nice curve to him. Try not to put a right angle in because <laughs> that doesn't look right. So I want just a couple of strands on the top now. Now they've actually separated, but that's okay. So I'll cut one more bunch off. Let's go over the end of that. Oh, I've missed one out there. You see that one's just escaped, so all I need to do is just loosen that stitch off. Bring that through the hole. There we go. And then I'm just going to split these threads into two. Like so. I'm going to come up on one side, down on the other side. Make a loop, so this is a little fly stitch, back up in the middle between those two inside that loop. And that will just secure those and just separate those a little bit. Gives them a nice stitch at the end, down through to the back. And then you can just cut these to length. So don't cut the gold thread yet because what we're going to do is go back up the body and this is the chance now to catch in any of those little bits that are sticking out that we didn't manage to get in the first time. So you can see that angle of the needle. I'm just going in there so it goes around there. It's a little bit sticking out there so I'm going to come up this side. Make sure I catch that in with this stitch here. Like so. And you can go all the way up the body again with a second set of stitches. So don't do the first set too close together. And if you don't need this second stitch, then you can just finish your thread off from the first. But if you just want to secure those little ends that are sticking out, there's another one just here. So I'm going to go over there. You could change colour if you wanted to, and it could have different colour markings on his body. You can have a lot of fun with this. You can also mix your colours in the body as well. I've just done one colour, but you could mix two colours in there if you wanted to. Give them a bit of variation. You can have a lot of fun with these and do really creative things with them. So see how I'm just carefully placing that? I just want to catch that thread in that's a little bit loose. And we'll do one more, I think, there. A good thing when you do three-dimensional things is you can squash them around a little bit. Can you see that? I can just mould that into shape because it's sitting on top of the fabric. So, so one more over there. Nice and tight. So I'm just going to turn the frame over. I'm going to finish that thread on the back. Just going to weave it underneath the stitches a few times. Make sure it's really secure, not going to come undone. And that is the body of the dragonfly done. Okay, so now we've worked the body, we need to look at the wings. I'm just briefly going to go through some wing fabric. Now, I did talk about this a little bit in the other video, but I want to show you what I'm going to use. So this is the one that I'm going to demonstrate on today so it's nice and see-through. You want something quite light I think for a dragonfly's wings and um, it needs to be able to fly. So I've just found this blue one and it's quite see-through but it's quite um, tightly woven so it's something good and solid to stitch on but I'll just show you a couple of other things as well. I've got this gold lame thread which you could use if you wanted to. We've got some silks here. Um, this is a metal tissue. It's actually woven very very fine metal so it sort of holds its shape a bit so something a little bit stiffer as well um, is really good if you can that's a little bit easier to stitch on um, this is a bit of organza we talked about this last time really nice to stitch on but if you're not a competent stitcher with this this might be a little bit harder it's very fine you've got to be very delicate with it you might want to try some try something a little bit more solid to start with so some fabrics maybe 
this is a silk fabric but you can see it's a fine one but it's still a, it's a fabric rather than something that's see-through so if you're not sure and you want to have a little practice I think go for a fabric first you can get some really pretty ones as well you could do with some out of a bit of lace we've got a little bit of this um, pattern one which I showed you last time just see through it a little bit but it's got that really nice detail on it this is some organza I think I used that one for this did I not sure Ganza's nice, there's a nice blue one. So you can see the sort of direction I'm going in here, sort of dragonfly greeny bluey colours, but you could do a completely fantasy dragonfly if you want to do whatever colour you want. If you can find a nice pattern fabric, you can use a nice pattern fabric. Um, this one um, I have used, I'm going to show you this shortly, because this one actually changed colour. It's really beautiful, but it's very, very fine. That one's a bit more lace there bit more of that blue and I just wanted to mention this because I think somebody has asked me this already can you use netting for this you can but you're guided by where the holes are in the net um, so it's hard to do very accurate stitching which we need to do on this we're going to do small stitches and you can only stitch where there's a hole in the net so you can use net but it might not look so neat around the edge so I suggest a fabric um, rather than something with holes in but if you can do a see-through one that will give your dragonfly a really nice dragonfly feel. So once you've got your fabric you're going to need some wire to go around the edge that will form the shape of the wings. This cake wire is really good this is happens to be a gold one so it's a wire covered in a, a gold sort of foily paper you can get a white plain white one or a green one and um, we talked about those in the video as well so I'm going to use this gold one because I'm going to stitch over it in gold and then if your stitching is not really really tight and you can see a bit of the white doesn't matter because it's gold with a gold thread so um, it won't show through so you could think about matching your wire to the materials that you're using in your dragonfly and regarding how much you need they come in 30 centimeter lengths and I would suggest two of these cut it in half and half for each wing that's a little bit more than you will need but I think it's better to have too much than not enough if you try and squeeze four wings out you're right on the edge of what you can use so I suggest two lengths of this cut them in half and then half for each wing and we're going to do four wings so the other thing that you'll need is some thread to stitch it down with. I'm going to use this Diamond thread, again, this gold thread to go over that. But you can use any kind of thread you like. You can use the stranded cotton if you want to. Just use one strand. I suggest it is very fine, but you want it nice and delicate. Or you can grab some nice embroidery threads with you or machine embroidery threads that are sparkly quite nice. This is a nice one here. This is Madeira one. That's a beautiful dragonfly colour. It is very fine. So um, it is going to be very fine stitching, but you can choose anything you like to stitch over the wings, um, stitch around the wings with. So I'll just show you what we're going to do. So we're going to make these four little wings here and we're going to make them separately. And you can see they're slightly different shapes here. So the four wings are these ones here and then we're going to do these ones behind separately as well so two different shapes so you've got your patterns on the pdf design and i've done three sizes depending on what size um dragonfly you want to do so we've got four wings here and hind wings here they are slightly different shape actually on a dragonfly and you can pick whichever one you're going to do because i've got to show you and you want to see on the camera i'm going to do the largest one so all you need to do is to get your length of wire and we're going to bend it to this shape so the easiest way to do that is just to fold your wire in half and just to squash the end. Now you can see already <laughs> an instant wing. But we want to make it a little bit more interesting than that. So you just have to fiddle with it basically. Let's do the four wings first because that's more complicated. So I'm going to take it to roughly where it ends like so. And if you just twist the end of that a couple of times and that will hold that in position and then you can just fiddle with this shape if you don't do that you end up sort of fighting the wire a little bit so it's got a little bit of an inward bend here and I just tend to do it with my fingers so I've just pushed it in there with my thumbnail and then you can bend that out at the bottom stretch it apart and you can see that start to come so just keep fiddling with your wire until you get that nice shape that's a little bit too much of a bend 
just a little bit at a time. Try not to bend it too much because then you'll end up all out of shape. Just little adjustments each time till you get something that's like it is on the PDF. Now don't worry too much if it's not exactly the same. What's more important is that the two wings are the same. So I suggest you bend all your wings first um, so that you can get them all, of, all the same before you stitch it down and you think, oh, how did I make that wing? So bend all four wings so you've got them ready to stitch down. Now what I didn't mention that is really important is that you have two opposite wings. So you've got a left and a right. So at this stage it doesn't matter, but it will when you stitch it down. So I've made two here and they will go like that. Now obviously I can just turn that one over and I've got two left wings there. So it doesn't matter at this stage, but you can see if I just put them together, try to make them as similar as possible so that they match and he doesn't fly around in circles. But when we come to stitch down, you'll need to turn one over and stitch it that way. So you have got a left and a right and a top and a bottom. So this is my wing fabric and I've just cut myself a small piece of that and I put it in a ring frame. Now be careful when you frame up a very fine fabric like this, don't put it in and start pulling it because you'll distress the fabric and you'll get big holes in it. So tighten your frame nice and tightly, just push the frame over the fabric and it should be nice and tight first go. So don't fiddle with that. And you just need enough really to put all four wings on. Do them all on the same piece of fabric and then cut them out after and that saves you wasting some fabric. So um, you will need to frame this up to do. It's very hard to do it without a ring frame, but just a small one is absolutely fine. Just big enough to get all four wings on there. So I've got my fabric in the frame. I've got my wired wings ready. And I'm going to do this one in the middle. I'm just going to show you how to do one on the camera. So I'm going to put it in the middle of my fabric, but make sure you can fit all four wings on there. And don't forget to do them opposite. This is the point you need to turn them around. So you've got a left and a right. It doesn't matter that they're in the right order. They'll be on the dragonfly. You can do them like that. We're going to cut them out and move them. But it's best to have this wire sticking off the end of the hoop because the wire can get in the way. So. Just carefully, carefully place them all on first, I suggest, and then we're going to hold them in place with a pin. So I'm just going to pick up a bit of the fabric over the top of the wire, pick up a bit of fabric the other side, and that will just trap the wire. Do the same here. Try not to put the pin through the fabric of the wing, just in case we damage it. And that's just going to hold it in place. My wire's off the end, so it's out of the way, and we can start stitching. So we're going to cut this wing out. We need to hide the ends of the thread and we don't want to cut through the ends of the thread. So the easiest way to do it is to put a knot on the top and go underneath the wire and we'll stitch over it on the back. So we're going to start stitching here. We're going to come along here. So if I put my knot there on the top, and I go underneath and come up right in the corner where these wires are twisted together, right next to that wire. And then you'll see underneath that that thread lies along with the wire and we can stitch over it. We will just check that we are doing that. So we come up on the outside of the wire and we're going to do a buttonhole stitch so that goes down on the inside. So we'll move a little bit just until you get it going. You make a loop there like so. We're going to come back up inside the loop but on the other side of the wire. Don't worry I'll go over this again. So we're making a stitch around the wire and through the fabric. So down on the inside of the wire, make a loop with your stitch, come up on the outside of the wire, right up close to the wire and right up close to that previous stitch, but inside that loop there and pull it tight. Now, when you tension it, pull it away from the wing like so. If you want to, if you're not sure this sounds a bit complicated, just try practice the buttonhole stitch on a piece of fabric first. We've got a video on that. If you want to know how to do that in more detail and then this is actually just doing the same stitch but around the wire. So down on the inside, up on the outside, inside the loop, tension it to the outside, don't get your fabric caught up in it. And you're just going to do that all the way around. So it is a little bit fiddly to do, but just take your time with it. You can see how carefully I'm handling it. It helps to have it in some sort of clamp to hold it still. So you've got two hands that you can use to help you. That will make it easy and just go nice and slowly. Make sure you can see what you're doing. Get some good daylight on that. 
nice and carefully all the way around the wing with the buttonhole. So I just want to show you what happens when you get to that starting knot. So I've come around here like this, there's my knot. Just check before you cut anything off that you have actually stitched over that thread on the back and it is secure. And once you've done that, you can just pull that knot up, just snip it off really carefully, you don't snip the fabric. And then that thread is nice and secure and you can carry on. And if you want to finish a thread, I'll show you how to do that. If you haven't got enough to go all the way round, you can just finish your stitch off. So to finish a buttonhole, you just need to go down the other side of that loop there. So on the outside, you can finish that off like so. That stop the stitch coming out. And then you can do one of two things. You can either bring your thread up, follow the wire underneath and bring your thread up in line with that. And then when you start again, the same way we started initially, you'll stitch over that thread on the back, or you can turn the wing over and you can just run the thread underneath the stitches on the back. That's quite fiddly, but it's okay, it does work. So just run the thread back underneath these on the back of the wing and that will make it nice and secure and your stitch won't come undone. So once you've been all the way round, we can stitch a little bit of wing detail on it because it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. So if you look at the PDF on the last but one page, there is a little picture of the dragonfly there and I've just drawn in some of the wing details. I've just done the basic ones. They are quite um, delicate when you look at them. There's lots of go going on on the wings, but I've just done the basic ones to make it look like a dragonfly. So you can use that for reference. And I've actually got one that I finished here. This is the other half of the pair that I have just started so that I can show you how to do this. So I'm going to work it on here and I'm going to work it in a blue thread that matches the body. So these set of wings are actually for this dragonfly here because I've already made the wings for the other one so that you don't have to sit and wait while I stitch loads of wings. So they're going to be for this dragonfly here. So I'm going to match the blue body with the thread. So I've got my blue thread to show you on the back. I've just woven it underneath those stitches on the back to start it off. That's a little starting knot. I'll cut that off when I finished. So you just need to secure the thread first. Remember, we're going to cut around outside this. So anything outside is going to get cut off. So just weave it under to start the thread off. So I've done this wing here. This is the other half, the matching half to the one that I have just started. And I wanted to show you this one finished. And you can see I've gone all the way around with the gold thread. And for the other one, you need to start here. You can turn your frame around. And I found it easy to go left to right and go around that way. If you're left-handed, you might want to consider going right to left and just swapping the stitch over. You might find that a little bit easier. So I'm just going to put these veins on now. I've just got one strand of the blue thread in my needle. And I'm going to start right up at the point here. And because this is see-through, I can just use a running stitch for this because you'll see the thread on the back. Now, I haven't marked any design on. I'm just going to wing it. Well, that's quite good. I'm just going to do a straight line up to the edge of it here. So again, use that diagram for reference if you want to. I'm just going to go straight to the edge of the wing like so. And then at the end, they have this little sort of, oh, I don't know what it is. Somebody who knows about these things might tell you, but this little sort of block of something right on the edge of the wing here on the veins of the wing here. So I'm just doing a few stitches around and around the fabric there just to indicate that like so. And again, you can see the stitch through. If you've got a solid fabric, you could consider doing a back stitch. So you've got a solid stitch on the top or you could do a stem stitch or something similar to that. Now I can't jump down and do this one because I'll see it across the back. So I need to finish that thread, weave it under those gold stitches on the back, start a new one down here and we'll go the other way and do the bottom part. So just gone along the bottom there, down to the bottom and up over the top there. You'll find the markings are different in the sets of wings. So just check out the diagram to see what they look like. If you want to draw it on, you could try drawing it on with a pen. Just test the pen on the bit of fabric first. Make sure it doesn't blob or anything like that. We've got a video about what pens to use on fabric. So if you're not sure, you can check that one out. Um, just make sure that you practice first and make sure that's going to be OK. You can add more details on. You can add as much on as you like. You can change colour if you want to. Well, world is your oyster so do have fun with those wings. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to finish this thread off and then we're going to look at a whole set of wings. 
So what I've done for filming purposes is I have already made four wings for this project here. They take quite a while to make, so I've done those off camera so that you're not waiting around while I do that. Um, so I'm just going to show you those now. So this is the, this is them. I can't speak anymore. So I've made four wings on the one ring frame. So make them all together if you can, then you can cut them out afterwards. So you can see that the wires are going off to the side, keep them out of the way as much as possible. I've done it in a sparkly thread. I actually used that one there to go around it. And I did the detail in this nice one that we looked at earlier. So I've done two colors for that. And before I take them off and cut them out, I'm gonna do one more thing. Now you don't have to do this stage, but it does help, I think, especially if you've not done these before. And we're just gonna put a little bit of glue on the back of the stitches. Now I have done these already because I had to let them dry. And all we're going to do is just around here, over the stitches and to the outside of the wing, don't go inside. I'm just gonna put some watered down glue on that and let that dry and when we come to cut it out that will just stop it fraying or doing anything and surprising that we don't want it to do so I'm going to show you how to do that now. So I'm going to do it on this wing that we've just finished here so you just need to turn it over and all I've got is some white um, water-based glue, craft glue, PVA if you're in the UK um, and we're just going to water it down a little bit so I've just dropped a bit of water on that. You need an old brush for your glue, um, quite a fine one if you can and you're just going to mix that up just to make it a little bit more runny. If you try and put it on straight out the bottle, you'll find it won't paste on. If you've got it too runny, it's going to soak in the fabric. So just, just a sort of nice creamy consistency that's not going to bleed all through the fabric, but you're going to be able to actually paint it on. Just get a little bit on the tip there. Turn your wing over so you're on the back, and then we're just going to paint over the stitches, over the back of that buttonhole. Try not to go onto the wing. This dries clear, but you'll probably still be able to see it. So just over the backs of them. It doesn't matter if you come out onto here, we're gonna cut this out. So you can be quite generous that side, just onto those stitches there and all the way around the wings. And this does help when you're cutting out, actually it does make it a lot easier. So worth taking the time to do this stage if you can. So all the way around. And that will just, that's a little knot that needs to come off. We'll cut that off in a second. Just around the edges like so, and just let that dry and then they're ready to cut out. So I've done that process on all of these. These are ready to go. They're nice and dry now, so you can take it out of the frame. This is the exciting bit. So this is the thing with stump work. You make all your little bits first and then you assemble it all and suddenly it all comes together. So. There's my four wings, I'm going to cut those out. So a nice sharp pair of scissors, embroidery scissors. If you happen to have some that have got this curve on it like so, that helps because then you're not digging into the fabrics. I'm gonna have a go with these curved ones. Don't worry if you haven't got those, just a sharp pair of embroidery scissors will be fine. And first of all, you can just cut them apart like so. So just separate them all. do those two while I show you what to do. Now I probably don't need to tell you to go super careful on this bit. You don't want to cut what you've just done so just start carefully at the edge and just come in. You don't have to cut it all off in one go. You can just cut a bit at a time so I'll show you on this now. So just cut away that excess. What you can do when you get to the wire, if you bend the wires up you can just cut underneath them. We're just going to cut all that excess fabric off. So just a little bit at a time. And you can go closer and closer. Just start to cut away all that excess fabric. Really carefully. And then these scissors come into their own. If you turn them the other way, can you see how the blade points away? From the stitches you're not digging it into the stitches so they are quite useful for this. I'm going to get as close as I can and then what you can do here is you can get your fingernail and you can just rub it along the edge of that fabric. Now it has got a bit of glue on it so it won't fray too much but it just helps it to stick up a little bit and then you can get it nice and close with your scissors and just trim off that excess fabric. So you want to go as close as you can to this stitching so really 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 carefully <laughs> for this so I'm going to do this just off camera because I can't see close enough to do it and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all cut. 
Okay, so they're all cut out. No disasters <laughs> have happened. So you can just see what they look like when they're cut out there. And just a little tip for you, if you turn them over and cut them from the back when you get really close, especially if you've got these curved scissors, you can just get under and cut that fabric, the fabrics underneath. And the good reason for using buttonhole stitches has got that little edge on it and that just hides the edge of the fabric. So that sort of, sort of covers it up. You can just stitch over and over, but you've got to be super careful with your cutting. So those are all out like so. And you can see we've got our pairs now. That's that way up looking really good so we just need to get them onto the dragonfly. So I've got my frame ready to put the wings on and what we need to do now is just place them in position so make sure you get the right ones in the right order and the right way around so I'll just double check that's the lower one and that's the upper one and you can see that I've just untwisted those wires that I twisted together to hold the wings in the first place. It's better to plunge these through to the back separately. I'm going to take each wire through a separate hole. So I just untwisted them and straighten them out as much as possible. So let's start with the uppermost one first. Now, technically, the wings sit on top of the thorax like that. Um, I have tried to get that through the body. It's really, really tricky. If you want to spend some time fiddling with it and trying to get the wires through, that would look more authentic. But it's much easier just to put them at the side. I know it's not quite accurate, but it is much easier to do that. So you'll need a great big chunky needle. Doesn't matter what size, just a great big chunky needle, really the wire's got to go through the hole that the needle makes so um and it needs a point on the end and what i'm going to do is to make a big hole at the sides i'm just coming below this part here and i'm going to pull that all the way through it makes a hole in that fabric i can see the hole take it through again the what the eye is the widest part and i'm just going to make another one next to it and try and do this two together this is a touch fiddly it's going to be a bit fiddly on the camera as well but i shall see if i can do it both so make two holes and then you want to push these wires through the holes so let's see if we can do that i think i'm going to get that one in okay I heard that one go through let's see if we can get the other one in Yeah, that went through okay as well. If you find the wires don't go in, you can get a larger needle and make a bigger hole. <laughs> it won't rip the fabric. You're just making a hole, you're just parting the fibres, it will be fine. So just get a bigger needle if you find that that's struggling a bit. Now the paper is stripping a bit off that one. Can you see that paper's coming off there? There's still a bit of paper underneath. I'm just going to cut that paper off. That hole isn't quite big enough, but... Let's see if we can just so I used the green wire for these ones paper covered wire but they work in the same way there we go that's gone in and you're just going to slide those underneath oh, look how great that looks and that's where the wing is going to sit. We can fiddle with it later. So I suggest you poke all the wings through to the back first and then we'll finish them off. So I'm just going to put these two on and I will show you how to finish it on the back. So this wing sits below this one. They have to work independently of each other. So I'm going to make two more holes with my large needle. One, two. And I'm going to get these through to the back and then we'll turn it over. So this is the back of the embroidery. There's the body that we worked earlier. So it's all in mirror images, my ball rushes and my ribbon work here. So the wires have come through to the back. Just going to do half first. And actually I said put all the wings through, but I think maybe just do two, finish them off and then do the other two because you're going to have a mass of wire on the back. The wings are here. I can feel them on the back and you can see them just moving. So what you need to do is bend the wire back in the direction that it came from. If I try and do it over here, you could just pull the wings out. So you want to just fold that back, fold all, all of those back on themselves like so. And we're just gonna stitch those down. Doesn't matter what thread you stitch with this. I'm just doing it in this color so you can see what I'm doing, but you're not going to see it. So I'm just starting the thread off just by weaving it under some of those gold stitches. I'll cut that off like so and then we're just going to stitch over them so i'm going to pick up a bit of this backing fabric 
So you really do need to have a backing fabric on stump where you're poking things through and you've got wire in there and it's quite heavy stitching on it. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say backing fabric, we've got a video on that. Check that out to why you need one and how to use one. But this is a really good um, example of why you need one. So we can just take that needle through that backing fabric only um, and not through the front fabric and I can finish my threads on it. So it's really good for hiding that. And all I'm going to do is just pick up a bit of that fabric and over sew that on the back like so just a bit. try and do it each one separately if you can it's more secure and what you can do when you've done a few stitches if you want to is you can then bend that wire back on itself and just go back over it for a little bit of extra security so that those wings can't be pulled out Do finish these off securely, it'd be a shame to do all that work and, <laughs> and then his wings fall off. So just a few stitches like so. And to finish that you can just go through the loop and that will tie that off nice and tightly. Cut that one, actually you don't need to th cut the thread, you can use that for the next one. And then I'm just going to cut that wire off, I'm going to use wire cutters for this. Don't use your best embroidery scissors. And snip that off and that is nice and secure on the back so I shall do the other ones and then we will bend them to shape on the front so we're nearly there folks I hope you're still with me and um, he's looking fabulous I'm quite quietly pleased with him there so his wings are all fastened on those wires are all tied down nice and tightly so we just need to put one more thing on and that's his eyes so I've got these really pretty beads here I'd like to do these last just because I can see what they look like with the whole thing then just going to sew those on there like that. I think I've got a gold thread I'm going to sew them on with. So let's just start it with two little stitches. Quite a strong thread to sew beads on with. Make sure the needle goes through the hole in the bead. Where is the hole? It's there. Just thread that on. Let it lie flat so you can get it in the right position. Like so. Put that one on that side. And then if you want to put another stitch through them both once they're in position you can that will just make them extra secure you can just go through like that they're not going to come off either last stitch here finish that thread off on the back you can just weave it underneath some stitches I'll just leave it there for a minute because I want to have a little look at him and then you can just adjust his wings those two are just going to sit on top and you can just bend that wire make him look like he's in flight flying over the ball wishes and there we have our finished dragonfly so I hope you've enjoyed following along and maybe you're inspired to have a go yourself. If you have made a dragonfly from this video, I would love to see it. So if you want to send a picture to me, I will put an email in the description below this video. You can email me your pictures there and we'll have a little dragonfly gallery in the next stump work video. So it'd be really lovely to see if you've made one too. I won't pretend that stump work isn't fiddly, it is a little bit fiddly, but just take your time to do it, just do it carefully, make sure you've got good light to do it and um, that you're not hungry or <laughs> thinking about something else to do. You need to be able to concentrate to do this, but it is a really beautiful technique and I will finish the other one as well. I'll finish this one too and I'll put pictures of that up on the community page, so do check that one out there to see what that one looks like. Don't forget there's the download that you can um, do as well, that you can, you can download for free and print off and you can have a go at this dragon fly so there's another video over here that you might enjoy watching if you've enjoyed this one do give it a thumbs up share the embroidery love and i'd like to thank you all for watching and i will see you next time